Hello, and welcome to Watch Our Crappins, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker, and joining me today is the one, the only, the original babe, Mr. Ronnie hey, Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How's it going? Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Uh, How's it going? Hey, babe. Hey, babe. Hey, love you, babe. Hey, babe. Love you too, babe. I'm going to propose by the end of the month, babe. <laughs> yeah, that's like insane right now. But <laughs> like, Ronnie, like, why are you putting that all on me? Please don't put that all on me. Uh, what's going on over there? Not much. Just uh, it's we're here. We're in the middle of our work week. A lot of lot of fun stuff. Uh, we're talking summer house today. Obviously, I hope it was obvious. Um, but before we get into that, we have our live shows. We just want to remind you about in case you didn't hear from the other five million times we mentioned it. But it's always good because you never know what people are listening for the first time. Um, in just like a few weeks, we are going to New York City for our big annual new york city show it's always probably one of the biggest shows of the year for us uh that's going to be on may 11th at the town hall which is where we did the crappies last year probably will be the biggest show of the year for us in fact and then dc also one of our biggest shows of the year will be two days later on the 13th that's at the lincoln theater so both those shows are going to be crazy i don't want anyone to miss it it'll be it'll be wonderful um and then in june we have just like um Mary of shows to do we're going to san diego we're going to st paul minnesota we're going to chicago we're going to columbus we're going to boston and we're finishing the entire cheetah brand tour at mash and tuck at connecticut at the foxwoods resort and casino so uh please join us go to watch for that and then uh don't forget patreon our lovely beautiful sweet patreon patreon.com slash watch which is where um, our bonus episodes live. Last week, Ryan and I sat in the Toronto airport and we watched people walk back and forth in front of us. And we had a lot of things to say about them. So uh, please go listen to that bonus episode because we enjoyed it. And um, you also get access if you support at certain tiers to Crap is On Demand, where you can watch us do the podcast, not just listen. And of course, our Discord channel. And then last but not least, uh, we do Dwell Hello every other week which is where we recap House Hunters or House Hunters International. We always have a blast with that. Last week, we recapped... Uh, what was last week's recap, Ronnie? It was the guy... It was the family in... It was a house. It was regular House Hunters. Do you remember which one They were moving to Georgia because they were right, a micro farming. Farm. It was micro oh, farming douchebags, okay? <laughs> those people had $5 and he wanted to live on Yellowstone Ranch. <laughs> they wanted a wraparound porch and rolling hills, but also room for cattle. And <laughs> A lady who was shocked that there were stalls in a barn. She's like, wow, how helpful. We keep the animals separated. And like we normally have the cows windows. breeding with the hens, you know? <laughs> They were so terrible. So anyway, that's that's actually an exclusive to One Tree Plus and Amazon Music. So uh, okay. that's there. That's it. All right. All right. That's 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 a lot. We just opened our trench coats and we're selling a lot of watches in there. Yeah, okay. but it's all good. They're all good watches. We're selling Rolexes, and they're they're all totally real guys. So let's <laughs> move on to Summerhausen, huh? Summerhausen. Summerhausen. Huh? Yeah, ooh, this is this is a little bit of a spicy episode. Danielle and Lindsay, their the the destruction of their friendship continues. The literal worst parts of everybody just coming right out. You know, uh, uh, I, I got a lot of heat last week, Ronnie. A lot of heat because I was more on Team Danielle in this fight, and uh, people were people were upset. There were Facebook posts that were written that were very angry at me. There were tweets that were angry at me. And um, I have to say, I apologize, but I'm not going to change my point of view. I stick behind it. Good for you. And also, you. it's Summer House. So it's like, it's all good because, like, who cares? It's Summer House. We all can. Yeah, it's Summer House. I don't care if, if someone's on Team Lindsay, someone's on Team Danielle, if someone's on team you know potted plant i'm all down i'm down let's let's well, all get also, into it you know? The, you know the posts weren't like ben i hate ben ben sucks they were just like <laughs> i disagree with you you know so that's it was that's like ben good. you are absolutely wrong what is wrong with you you are terrible this is the first time i've ever disagreed with you and i said like why are you putting it all on me <laughs> yeah put your weight on me but you know the good thing about summer house is that you pick a side and then the next week somebody activates and then goes fucking insane <laughs> and it gets harder and harder to stick up for them as Lindsay 
often does. As you know, any Lindsay fan knows, this is just the ride of Lindsay. Okay, it is. You stick up for Lindsay. You stick up for Lindsay, and then you're like, "No, Lindsay, no." Hey, and by the way, Lindsay. By the way, I just want to clarify. I love Lindsay. I think Lindsay is is great chaotic energy. She's like there have been times where she's made me so angry on this show because I'm like, what the hell's wrong with her? But she is like a wonderful, perfect addition on this show. She she does bring it to life when she is activated and not trying to play like house with Carl. But um, I, I do love Lindsay. I just happen to be more on Danielle's side in this fight. OK, well, you know, I love uh, being comfortable in our clothes and you're wearing a wrong suit and you're very comfortable. <laughs> in it, so. It's very brief. You are Jonathan you. Van Ness and you're saying, hey, I am a queer eye and I'm here to tell you how you could like adjust your look right now. <laughs> no, you just you just keep your that wrong suit. It's, wrong, it's, I'm keeping it's my a, Jose it's Banks, a 3500 <laughs> wrong thread count. <laughs> And I say good for you. The shoulders okay. are a little too wide. I get it. <laughs> so we start where we ended, uh, where Lindsay is out partying with everybody. There's a part of the group that's partying, and then there's a group that's staying home to make pizza with Raghu. Ooh. <laughs> now, I don't know how Carl's about to ask anybody to raise children with him when he's making pizza with ragu sauce and if you do that for your children shame on you shame. you're teaching your children to be trash okay learn Thank how you. to Deep saute trash. an onion some garlic and add some a can of tomatoes in there and blend it you, up is it that you, hard really it, people it's not it's literally not there's i remember actually i had like a little pizza making phase like 10 years ago and there's on all recipes.com there's like a very highly rated and reviewed pizza sauce recipe that doesn't even you don't even have to saute onions you could just like mix together tomato paste and various things and like oregano and it it works it's just so much better than not rat not the ragu rose not the i like ragu. that you changed from a wrong suit to a wrong apron <laughs> don't saute well, an onion i mean like no i mean you aspire like that I'm just, no, what I'm saying is, of course, I would, nowadays, I would, of course, do the sautéed onion version. But I'm saying that you could still, like, it doesn't there, have you to be, even it do, like, the simple hack. You could do a simple you're hack, right. and it'll still you're taste right. better than the ragu. You're right. You're Thank you're you. in a right apron. Thank you. Um, Thank you for but, tailoring my suit and making it look better on me. Because <laughs> ragu is just, that's a fucking shame. Uh, so... Uh, basically, so now Danielle and Carl are talking because Carl's like, Oh, I'm gonna tell you something about Lindsay here. Talking to Danielle, <laughs> so they go into like a little room and they're talking about the relationship. And he's like, Why are you saying we're taking things too fast? And she's like, Are you not searching for rings? And he's like, Yeah, and then she screams <laughs> into a pillow, it's like, ah! She's like, it's been a year, Carl. Like, there's not an listen. There's not an ounce in me that's against you as a couple. Well, maybe about three to ten or forty-five ounces, but there's not generally an ounce against me as you as a couple. But please don't think that this is where it's coming from. Me saying this, I'm just thinking you guys are going too fast. You just screamed into a pillow. You know <laughs> what I mean? <laughs> she and had a sudden also, night terror. <laughs> you also just a couple of a minutes ago said how weird it was and you're allowed to be weirded out or whatever the hell so carl's like well actually that makes me feel 100 percent better because like oh, i was over here thinking you had an issue with me i'm like like i don't know like maybe like our past from our relationship years ago and she tells us i met carl in 2015 and we dated for a minute and it didn't end well but it is laughable that anyone would think I still have feelings for Carl. I mean, that is insane. I just literally want to hang out with Carl all during the week. And Lindsay, that's it. <laughs> just want to be with Carl and Lindsay all during the week. That's it. So Danielle's like, I just feel like you guys are cutting me out, which is really the crux of it. That I think that's is, it. that's Thank what you. it is. And I think, by the way, yeah. that's totally valid. You're allowed to feel that way. You know, that's it. She feels just left out, you know? And Carl's like, oh, well, no, I don't want you to, uh, you, you guys to think that. Like, I, I want to find things where we do things like the four of us. And by the four of us, I mean, like, huh, me, Lindsay, Wesley Stripes, and the new sheep. And then, like, we can zoom you in occasionally. You know what I'm saying? I don't want you to feel left out. Oh. Or, like, if it's going to be, like, the four of us without Robert, it can be, like, me, Lindsay, you, and, like, the Lord in between us all. You know, like, so we're at a Catholic dance. We can't actually make out, because you probably still want to make out with a man, because we did that one time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, how about it's, like, the four of us, like, me, oh, Lindsay, uh -huh. um, like, our cell phone, and we could take photos, and then you could be, like, the fourth person, and you can receive the photos the next day. <laughs> It'd be totally cool. Yeah. <laughs> so she's like, why does it have to be couples, though? Why can't it be the three amigos? It's like, oh, God, because none of you are Steve Martin or Martin Short 
or Billy Crystal. None of none of you have it in you. Or Chevy, Please Chevy don't Chase. use. Wait, then how is it three amigos? Because Bill, Billy Crystal was in City Slickers and ah, Chevy Chase was the right. big amigo. But right. still, your point remains, none of them are Billy Crystal. Yeah. They're not um, City Slickers either. None of you are Billy Crystal either. <laughs> so don't go getting sleepless in Seattle. Stop forgetting was, Stop forgetting also Paris. also not Billy Crystal, right? That was Tom Hanks. That was Tom Hanks. God, what's Billy Crystal done? That guy hasn't done shit. <laughs> Why is he even in our collective consciousness? Work harder, <laughs> Billy Crystal. Hey, Billy Crystal, get out of this summer house recap. You don't have the IMDb <laughs> to even deserve to be to be here, okay? He's about to do a song and dance. I know. <laughs> Sir, please be more gay iconic. So, do you uh, still yeah. remember the three amigos dance? Oh, yeah. It was like it was <laughs> up here, huh. hips, and then spit or whatever. Yeah. Love that movie. So um, she's like, why can't I be the Amigos? Because like, I have a different kind of relationship and I have a different career. I'm a startup founder. Oh, Danielle. <laughs> so Danielle also posted this uh, thing this week that a listener sent us a screenshot of that was like, okay, we're getting ready with my app. So I need someone who can program and <laughs> program this entire app based on designs that we've mocked up for free. But maybe you'll get paid in the future or it's such a big product project you'll get paid that way i was like yeah, this is now this is yeah. way like a year after this shit is shot and you're basically looking for a free programmer right now what are uh, you doing over there uh, it's giving me uh flashbacks to rome.com by landon you <laughs> by landon uh, <laughs> but you know what i believe in danielle more than i believe in landon i and do I too remember danielle was always late because she was on the long island railroad after work and, and yeah. working on her laptop and like running in all harried with her laptop out like sorry i'm late i was at work and like pulling off her suit jacket and like kind of yeah. getting drunk while also typing emails i was like if any girl can make an app this girl can make an app yeah but i'm i'm a little concerned i just feel like we're like in a world of tech layoffs and everything i'm like is this the time to start up a fashion app is this i don't know i'm scared for her so but either way that's probably why she's also acting crazy because she's probably stressed out of her mind yeah you know, she probably made a terrible decision and then she is literally saying like i'm stressed out i'm a startup founder this is hard on me and carl's like yeah well that's a lot of that's a lot of pressure and stress i guess and she's like i just would love the people that are closest to me checking in on me and like Lindsay being at the top of that list. And if, if we're going in separate directions, then let's manage those expectations, which is another reason why I believe she, she could do a startup because she's saying things like, let's manage those expectations. Very corporate. Yeah, speak, you she know? knows business speak. She knows corporate <laughs> speak, you know, she's like, uh, you know what? Let's think on that. Let's take it. Let's take a breather. And hey, I just uh, want we'll to bump reconvene. this to the top. Can I bump this discussion to the top? <laughs> I'm going to circle back to it. <laughs> so we go to Amanda, uh, Kyle, and Gabby. And Amanda, of course, you know, loves this shit. She's like, well, they're never going to have the same relationship they had when Lindsay was single. Because their relationship before was Lindsay did whatever she wanted. And then Danielle just kind of supported it. Like Lindsay was here and Danielle was here. So, like, now that Lindsay's deciding to be over here, then Danielle's over here. Then, like, who's over here, Kyle? Because, like, then where are we? Like, my hand's here, but then that hand's there. But then I don't even know where my hands are anymore, Kyle. <laughs> Amanda is one millisecond away from just voguing at this point. Her hands are, like, forward, left, right. You know, she's like, she is. Ta, 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 ta. <laughs> She is doing the three amigos dance. Yeah, she's slowly forming the three amigos dance with her hand examples. And I like Gabby uh, following her hands around. And she's like, um, so it's like she's over there. And then the other girl's like, but then why am I staying over here when you're over there? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes. It's, yes, it's Gabby, three card you, Monty. You're getting it. You're getting it, Gabby. <laughs> I know it's like the slowest shell game ever. Okay. <laughs> There's a P under one of these shells. Pick it up. It's that one. You're moving very slowly, ma'am. Ma'am, it's not hard to track your your game here. Okay, speed it up. Uh, <laughs> Amanda, the worst street hustler of the all worst, time. The worst shell game <laughs> lady of all time. So then we go back to Carl and Danielle. And he's like, oh, so you feel like you aren't as close as before? Is that what you're saying? She goes, yeah. Because I'm like a phone call. I'm like a text message. He goes, oh, so you don't feel dialed in? She's like, thank you so much for the corporate speak. Because yes, I am an app manager. And I don't feel dialed in. 
as per my email, I do not feel very dialed in right now. So Carl's like, well, uh, I want you to find a way like to feel like you're getting something back from her, like and getting support from her. And I, like, I think she wants to do that too. And like, I think like I get like in the beginning, it's like weird. It's in shock seeing the two of us. It's like seeing a Giselle with a giraffe and they're like fucking it's weird. But like, my worry like all of a sudden was like going like oh like did you think like i did something crazy like because i'm like i'm like really focused right now i'm just like you know like on this relationship you know what i'm saying yeah he's basically saying does she think i'm gonna fall off the wagon and just be a crazy fuck boy again and mm -hmm. that's his paranoia and he's right to think that and she wouldn't be wrong to to have that feeling either frankly and they even tell you in recovery yeah not to move too fast like literally right. not to move too fast and to really watch out and to not just trust because you've had a good year that it's got a good life like it's one day at a time you know i mean did everyone, everybody's heard it so we've all seen countess luann's you know her her post cabaret season we all saw what happened <laughs> you know it's you know after it's it, things can still happen you know so, um, yeah, I was thinking all that season just flashed in front of my eyes. I remember when she was like, oh, God, I feel so good being sober. Would you like something to drink? And opened her fridge and it was all bottles of rosé. I was like, seriously? <laughs> that that culminated her, her sobriety. That culminated her like going on a bender and buying like like. Call, using all her resources to try to buy that roundhouse in, in Hudson Valley. Yeah, <laughs> it's a roundhouse. It's a roundhouse. And she did it, you know, so. Yeah. Goals are important it. anyway. <laughs> so yeah. Carl's like, yeah, like, well, you know, it's just like hard because like I can be as like hunky dory with Danielle, but it's like still like not going to mend fence to Lindsay. And like, I'm just hoping like my positivity and like support can like help them come together. So uh, through the power of positivity, I'm just going to see like, babe, babe, a lot. And I think it's going to work, babe. So she's like, well, I want the best for both of you. And I just wanted to be heard in the friendship. And he's like, yeah, I got that. Okay. So this is the crux of it. I get that. I get that Lindsay is a train that just keeps going at full steam ahead. And I think sometimes it doesn't matter who's around Lindsay, as long as she has someone to talk to and laugh with. It could be mm -hmm. anyone. And it is all about Lindsay. And it is. I get what Danielle's saying that way. But you can't go to all the girls that don't like Lindsay and talk shit to those girls and then do it in front of them to like kind of embarrass Lindsay. And I think that that's where Lindsay's mm. problem is that Danielle's yeah. saying all I wanted was more friendship. And she's completely forgetting her culpability in what this fight has actually become about. Well, yeah, I, th I think actually I think you actually are right too. believe it or not. I think that we have actually found like I think we've gotten to the the core of it, which is that. I don't think that Lynn's that Danielle was necessarily going to those other girls to embarrass Lindsay, but I think she may, maybe she was being careless with who she was venting to not really thinking about the consequences. And Lindsay's annoyed by that. But the truth is like what, like Danielle's issue keeps getting sidetracked to buy a debate about how she reacted to the issue, not the issue itself. So um, in well, some right, ways, I almost, she didn't bring that issue. She didn't bring that issue to the table to just Lindsay. She brought it to the girls behind her back, and then she brought it to the girls in front of Lindsay. That's when she confronted Lindsay in front of all mm -hmm. the girls. So right. I think that's why it's like, eh, your issue doesn't matter because what you did was so shitty that like your issue now takes the back seat. Whereas if you had just come to her and been like, hey, can we go to lunch? And I feel like you don't talk to me or like you don't know what's going on right. in my life. Now, to be honest, we all know Lindsay and Lindsay might have had the same reaction, which is, how dare you? Why can't you call me? Why are you in the yeah. city? Like she could have still done all that, but we'll never know. We will never know. We'll never. So, know. but Lindsay, one of the rare uh, moments where Lindsay's actually partying and being carefree this season because she is out at like a bar. And so she's partying with Sam and Chris and Corey and Sam are making out. And meanwhile, it's like 10, 18 p.m. And Sam calls the group at home, the pizza group, to be like, we're going to go to Southampton Social tonight. And everyone's like, oh, not Southampton Social again. Mm -hmm. She's like, come on, you guys are going out because you're not lame. Okay, Kyle, you're not fucking lame either. Come on, come out. Don't you want to spend an evening out while I make out with Corey and Chris exists? Come on. And Amanda's like, I'm lame, fam. We know she wasn't talking to you. 
So then Lindsay gets on. She's like, okay, wait. I just tried calling Carlito. Where are you guys? And she's like, I'm in the living room. Well, where's Carlito? Where is he? Is he in the living room? Did he see his phone when I was trying to call him? Why didn't he pick up the phone when I was trying to call him? Was he getting an Oreo? He shouldn't be eating Oreos. Like, what is he doing? <laughs> was he delivering his pizza? Does he know it's not delivery? It's DiGiorno? He doesn't have to do that? Uh, so they're basically like, oh, yeah, he's in the living room. Uh, I'm sorry. No, he's in the office talking to Danielle. And that you know that you just know why is in the, the office moment. why why is in the office i don't I, I don't know what's going on why is in the office why 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 is in the Lindsay? Go, <laughs> fucking stop go have fun and stop fucking policing helicopter but she, Lindsay-ing. but you know what though because she has her abandonment issues of course remember and well, yeah and but so what i she think, think like she went out and so carl like suddenly like went to a whiskey distillery and you know I I feel like no I don't think that's what she Cinto, like what the hell <laughs> she might think that but I Give think that's what she pizza thinks night. <laughs> I think in her mind she's thinking like oh my god like all of a sudden he's not answering my call and now he's talking to Danielle and Danielle, Danielle is turning him and then all of a sudden I'm gonna lose Carl but like I I think yes. I can imagine her spiraling because that triggers all of her abandonment issues that's a good call yeah that's Thanks. a good call. How's my seat and looking now, baby? That's a good call seat you're wearing. Wow. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so, so Carl anyway. comes out. It's like Carl senses her. You know, he's yeah. been like, he's cool. been Lindsayed to death. Like literally nearly to death. So yeah. he comes out like, oh, hey, hey, oh, it's me, Carl. <laughs> here I am in the living room. Oh, I don't know what's going <laughs> on out here. And she's like, um, and, uh, and someone's like, she's asking about you, Carl. He's like, oh, hey, Lindsay, uh, before you hear from anybody else, I was talking to Danielle. It was great. It was great. Talking to Danielle, <laughs> totally in your favor. Oh, I was like, hey, Danielle, uh, Lindsay, great product. You should buy some Lindsay. Oh, I'm a good salesman. So, oh. <laughs> Yeah, he basically did that thing where you wake up a minute before your alarm. He's like, oh, I just sense it, Lindsay. Yeah. So then Lindsay yes, basically just like wake up like, oh, my God. Or the, you know, that nightmare where you're you're waiting tables, but you can't get to all the tables, you know, and everybody's yelling at you. You just wake up like freaked out. Like, I know I've forgotten something. It's like you can't get to every table to let everyone know that they look great, by the way. Huh. So then, um, yeah, so Lindsay sort of hangs at the phone because they're drunk and they're being crazy. And so uh, then there's more Sam and Corey making out and stuff. And Danielle is like so happy. She really feels like her conversation was with Carl. She got to like the core of what she was on her mind. She got everything off her chest and she needed to say to Carl, everything is great. They aired it all out. It feels like, you know, everything's moving forward. Yeah. She tells Kyle, she tells Kyle all that. And um, she's like, yeah, we aired it out. And he's like, you did did you say everything you wanted? Did you mention that time he did coke and didn't bring his computer to work? That was fucked up, man. She's like, let's just leave that in the past for now, okay? Yeah. And then Amanda is doing something on her phone and goes, oh my god, you guys, I took a picture of my face on accident. And then we see the picture of her face and I'm like, yeah. God bless <laughs> Gosh. this person. You know? I can't believe not more people stayed back for pizza night. So, uh, <laughs> Now it's eleven fifteen, and so the non pizza night people are back for like well, a, it's like a changing it's of the shift. Correction, correction. Before anybody, anybody's panties melts. It is eleven sixteen. I'm okay, so go sorry, ahead, Ben. Yeah, sorry, it's it was eleven fifteen on the West Coast. So, um, <laughs> so Sierra and Paige and Lindsay come back, and Carl's like, "Hey, babe. Hey, hi. Hey, run. Come on, babe. Run to me. Hi. Hi, sweetheart. Like, how are you? I missed you. I missed you. Oh, are you okay? He's like, yeah. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah, positive. <laughs> She, of course, runs to him and jumps on him and just, like, pins him down on the couch. She's like, mm, are you talking to anybody? Are you sure? You're okay? You're okay? And he, <laughs> like, waves. He waves at Danielle. He's like, hey, look. Oh, Lindsay's back. Oh, remember that totally innocent conversation we had? Maybe we should tell Lindsay about her because she's right here. <laughs> and Lindsay's like, um, who are you waving at? He's like, Danielle. And she goes, <laughs> oh. She says well. a really high voice, like, what? Oh, well, so I leave, I leave, I leave you alone for like two hours, and suddenly you're like waving to Danielle across the living room now, like really? Yeah. So then, uh, Sierra. Meanwhile, the other girls, of course, go to their go to the beds, and Sierra looks to looks at Amanda and is like, "Um, are you eating canned olives right now?" <laughs> She's like, "I forgot how good olives are." Also, the craziest thing happened when you were gone. 
I took a photo of my face by accident. It was crazy. And then I was like, well, I'm being crazy. I'm going to remind myself about black olives. They're a thing. <laughs> and Paige goes, out of a literal can? She's like, and who invited the hobo into our house? And Kyle's like, yeah, it's like beans, but they're olives. Wow. By the way, I was really not mad at Amanda for this. I have to say, I actually felt very connected to Amanda at that moment. With I love, love it's the just can, all black these olive. people who don't eat trying to figure out food which is so hilarious yes. they're all stick thin not a one of them eats a damn thing you know we see them eat a tiny bit on this show but you know this cast is like a kind bar kind of a cast that's it right kind bar and some kind of shake and they don't know that olives come in a can and they're literally scared to death of getting whatever you get from canned foods just from uh, watching amanda you know what i you know uh yesterday i went to costco and it was Lucky. actually the... oh, I'm so I know. jealous. I'm so lonely. I wanted to text you. I wanted to text you, but I actually felt like you would get mad at me. And so well, I feel lonely because you can only really go to Costco if you have a family. Like, what the fuck else do you get there? I mean, except a big screen TV or like, you know, yeah. I like the electronic section, but you know, or paper towels. I guess there are things I could buy, but I mean a bag of spinach is this big. I no. know. I um I went um I, I hadn't actually been to costco since before the pandemic and Whoa. so it's been a really long time yeah and so i got like my new card i was very happy to see that your face is in color now it's it's been that long that like the last time i got a costco card it was in that weird like grainy black and white where you i look like like a strange mafioso from east hollywood so um a i card? went on you know on the costco card Oh, you! Oh my God! So you like joined Costco yesterday? Well, no, no, no. I I had my membership, but I couldn't find my card, so I got a new card. Whoa, that's a big day. Good it was a big day. Yeah, and it was so awful in there. It was was it so terrible? People, I don't know what happens during the pandemic, but people, Costco is already rough to navigate, but it's even worse now. And it was crazy, but man, I felt alive on a Monday, that and sucks. I felt alive with all those like. The samples are gone, which is sad, but like all those things and I had to control myself and I just, I have had those experiences where I've gone to Costco and I've come back with so many olives and I'm like, I love olives. I'll eat all of these and I never eat any of them. So I was really good. I did not have olives, but huh. the reason I was, I was then starting to be like, why did I do this to myself? Why did I drive all the way out here? But then honestly, the thrill of a lifetime, you know, who was at Costco, Julia yeah. Sweeney from SNL and I literally almost went up to her and been like, I almost said, you're an icon. I almost just had like a, a like a gay, <laughs> a gay meltdown in front of her, but I controlled myself. I have an old friend who was friends of hers through a group called the Skeptics. And it's like Ooh. this big organization who just doesn't believe in things like that's their whole thing. <laughs> so they're like religion. I don't believe in it. And then they have these big meetings where they talk about like not believing in stuff. And Julia Sweeney is like really high up in the skeptics cults or wow. I called it a cult. It's not really a cult, but um, that's how I always heard of her. And they would have these meetings and they would be like fawning all over Julia. They're like, well, what did Julia say about, you know, Christianity? And it was like, <laughs> oh, well, she had quite an opinion. <laughs> and I always thought it was so funny that Julia Sweeney grew up to be like, a big fish in the skeptic pond. I always love <laughs> well, that. Well, she was a big her. fish in my Costco pond last night. I, I have love to say. it. And now and she's she in the Burbank so Costco, just yeah, you know, making do. Look, it, I she love was, it. it was so perfect. It was like I literally, my heart started racing. I don't know why. I was so surprised, and I was like, I'm so glad I came to Costco today. I saw one of my favorite SNL cast members of all time. And there were bulk items nearby. I would have said, wow, Julia Sweeney. So did you realize you were going to be this problematic back in the 90s? Because, <laughs> wow. wow. Uh, pull that Sir character out now. Why don't you try that one? Okay. <laughs> try, try pulling that, that cat character out now. I think people would love it. People yeah. would love it. Yeah, so um, let's go. So Lindsay <laughs> is still on Carl's lap, pinning him down. And um, she's doing her baby voice where she's trying to pretend like she's not fuming inside. But she's really about to kill him. And she's like, you OK, baby boy? And he's like, yeah, I was like literally nervous going to talk to Danielle, which feels silly now. Because like, what would I be? She goes, what did you say, baby boy? <laughs> baby boy, baby boy. Baby boy, baby boy. 
So Carl, I wish I remember the lyrics to that song. So Carl's like, yeah, it was just like, I'm not gonna lie, I was nervous, but like, uh, yeah, it was just like, you know, the dynamic's interesting. And she was saying it's like hard because like my friendship with Lindsay has changed, but I'm like not blaming you. And she's like, mm, yeah, but she is though. And he's like, yeah, but she said like to you like before that she would hope that you just would like poke and prod a little bit more, just like poke and prod, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I have to be the one that pokes and prods and figures it out like it's a fucking game. <laughs> I was like, oh no, <laughs> Lindsay is activating on your lap. This is not what you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she is. Um, also, by the way, Carl, I think Carl mostly deals with Lindsay okay, but he made a big mistake here. All huge. he really needed to all he really needed to say was, um, yes, I spoke with Danielle, and she really understands your point of view more. Because really, yes, that's he all. Did say the thing about. He did say the thing about like, well, I was worried that you thought I was going to fuck up or something because of our past. He did say that, but he was also like, I know, you know, he did get Lindsay's point out there too. I yeah, think uh, it was like, seemed like a good conversation. And so yeah, he he's said selling that, and, this wrong and he's and a salesman and I worry for his salesman qualities. His, Listen, rep, his resume is not great. His, his salesman re rep is not great around any parts. And I can see why now, because this is not how you go. You just need to say, Lindsay, we talked about you, but it was in a very positive way. And she totally gets where you're coming from now. That's it. Yeah, that's that's exactly all it is. And and maybe instead of saying, like, she wants you to poke and prod, maybe say she wants just to check in. You know, she's feeling a little I think she's feeling a little vulnerable right now. She's going through shit and she just she wants some check ins. But he says pokes and prods. So then Lindsay's like, oh, like it's like a game, which, by the way, where the fuck did that come from? Like, just, it's not a game. She's just checking on your friend. So Carl's like, oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I don't, I, I, I don't think no, that. No, yes, no, no, yes. No, no, yes, babe, because that's what's happening. And that's no, no, what's that was a good conversation. No, 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 seriously, it was a good conversation. And, like, I got a lot off my chest, not my hair, but, like, I got a lot of emotions off. Mm -hmm. And, like, I just wanted to hear that she doesn't have an issue with me and the relationship with you. And so, like, everything's good oh, today, so. Oh, well, I'm glad that you moved forward. <laughs> That's good. Because for some reason, she cannot move forward with me. So, great. Good for you. No, no, no. I think she'll be able to. She's, like, got, like, a startup and everything. And she said the words, like, circle back a lot and, like, uh, enclosed in this email. And, and then, like, like I, I, like, reciprocated by saying, like, dialed in. And it was great. It was, it, was, <laughs> it was a good Zoom. It was a good Zoom at the end of the day. <laughs> Um, the moment that Carl said, like, I just wanted to hear that she didn't have an issue with me. I was like, ooh, that was a mistake. Idiotic. That was a mistake. I you mean, know to where the this point is... of like, you shouldn't be married to Lindsay. Like, you, no. you're dealing with her the best that we've seen, I think, from everybody that Lindsay's ever dated. But yes. you, this is a fatal flaw. This is a Huge fatal flaw in mistake. your relationship. Huge. <laughs> So now it becomes about that. So, so Lindsay... she gets up and like kind of storms out, starts storming up the stairs. And she's like, Carl, I thought you were going to like actually have an opinion. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I do. Which, by the way, she means have my opinion. Because <laughs> yes, he did that's have what opinion. that means. He just yeah. is saying, I want you to have my opinion, not your own opinion. And right. he goes, I do, though. But like I told her I wanted to be, I wanted her to be like supportive of our, our relationship because like I'm a good person and she should support me because I'm a good person who's with a questionable person. So I just wanted the support. Mm, yeah, but I thought you were going to have an opinion. I thought you were going to have an opinion. He's like, well, yeah, but like, I feel you're good not giving about me a chance. You're I not feel good about my opinion. opinion. No, oh, yeah. oh, how opinion. do you feel good about it? How do you no, feel well, good it's about good, it? Because it's my opinion. It's good. It's delicious. It's like if I had chips, I would dip them in my opinion dip because it, it's that good. So, <laughs> well, is your opinion dip a little low fat? Because honestly, I feel like if I dipped in your opinion dip, mm, it would not be good for my body right now. Oh, low fat's a lie. So it's opinions and avocado. Good fat. So, like, we're supposed to be, like, waking up for berries and, like, working on ourselves and then come home and do your, like, stick our, like, chips into your opinion dip and, like, undo all the work that we've been doing, Carl? Yeah, and where's your opinion, Carl? What is it? And he goes, well, like, my opinion is good because she told me she doesn't have an issue with me and our relationship. I was like, oh, God, you idiot. Carl. And she goes, Carl. oh, so she doesn't have an issue with you. And he goes, yeah. And she goes, so you feel good. He goes, yeah. So... <laughs> Aren't I supposed just, to? <laughs> so you don't give a fuck that she has an issue with me? And he's like, no, oh no. It's like he's the suddenly realizes, like, oh yeah, no, 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 no. It's like, so the entire thing is blamed on me. And he's like, no, no, I'm not. I'm listen, I'm not gonna get into this right now. This is like, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna do this right now. Like, of no. course, Carl, of course. Of everything course. I say is wrong. Everything I say is wrong. Oh, you look great, by the way, but everything I say is wrong. Oh. 
Also, you know, when you're sober, listen, when you're anything, if you're not sober, if you're a complete drunk and currently drunk at the, don't fight. That's not the time to fight when you're drunk. That's okay. With your, the- with your spouse, really with anybody, but especially with your significant other. But when one of you is sober and the other one just went out and got wasted and Lindsay did. Yeah. Not the time. Not, not, the, not time. the time. Yeah. Not the time. But also Carl had, despite all that, like, don't say, I just was happy that she didn't have an issue with me. Like, no, oh, that's stupid. Cause you went in there Very to have stupid. a conversation. No, it's, yeah, it's just bad. It's bad. And so anyway, this is, by the way, kicking off the don't put it all on me, put it all on me uh, Olympics, where <laughs> there's going to be a lot of discussion of like, well, don't put that all on me. So Lindsay is basically calling him a defensive. He's like, oh, you're the one that's defensive right now. Oh, you are. And she's like, you only care about how you're being perceived in this situation. You don't care about me. He's like, not true. And they're like marching up the stairs. And Amanda and Paige are with their little can of olives, and they are loving Mm -hmm. this. They're smiling and listening. And, you know, people get annoyed with me when I'm like, those are mean girls. That's what I'm talking about. Who does that when, like, a relationship's, like, fine? Um, Well, by the way, I'm like, hello. Me and you. Like, how about, like, the entire nation? We're all watching this right now. Hello. (laughs) Yeah, but, I mean, that is kind of why they have that rep, you know? It's like someone's fighting, and they're like, (laughs) I love it. I love every second of it. But to be fair, that it's also could have very easily been edited to make it look like they were just having a conversation. But just no. when they have a conversation, their conversations always look like they're listening in on someone. No, but they probably were listening. In. I feel like pro- you know how we have that thing of like, oh my god, Ben, we're Gen X. Do you remember beepers? Well, I'm a little older than you, so I don't know if you do remember. Be- I do remember beepers, beepers though? You yeah. know, like, do you remember beepers or like? Do you remember when we all actually had to watch the same channels because there were only yes. three channels we had to gather yes. around the TV? Like Paige and Amanda are going to be telling their kids, oh, my God, Amanda, do you remember the time when, like, to be entertained, you literally had to eat an open can of olives and wait by stairs for a stupid fucking couple that should should have never been together in the first place to start fighting? Those oh, my God. Days. Amanda, do you remember that time we had front row seats to watching Jessica Tandy and Hume Cronin have a fight while they were doing who's afraid of Virginia Woolf, except they were fighting about their own lives. That was great. <laughs> Remember when we had like a front row seat to the old man fighting with the sea? <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> the sea was Carl. Yeah. The actual sea. So uh, yeah, old man in the letter C. That's what I mean. Lindsay was the old man. It was weird. It was very progressive, the genders. So <laughs> All right, I guess I should have explained that one a little bit more. Still, you're just kids, so you're not going to get it anyway. But that's what we have to do. That's what we used to have to do in our remember. Day. Remember when we saw the Broadway workshop of old lady screams at someone, starring Lindsay? It never made it very far, but <laughs> I really enjoyed our. I really enjoyed seeing that production. Uh, remember that? Do you remember when Krishna. we would just like stay up and wait for someone to press the medic alert? And say like, "Hey, I've fallen like because Lindsay's pushed me down the stairs and I can't get up." So, hey, remember, remember that, remember that play we saw where um, Maureen Stapleton uh, screamed at a man, and it was called um, "I'm not my sister, I'm in the family." Though it was a reference to the sitcom, I didn't, didn't really catch on, but I really loved it. <laughs> So oh, for Christ's sake. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry to everyone listening. <laughs> Let's talk about olives. So uh Lindsay Lindsay's <laughs> like <laughs> so everyone's like listening in and Lindsay's like, Well, you care about me in this entire situation, then you would understand. And he's like, Well, I do care about the situation, uh specifically my part in it, and that I've been exonerated and I'm a free man. And um yeah, it just is like an honor to have my reputation clean. Thank you. No yeah, more questions. but you don't care that she has an issue with me, and you don't give a fuck <laughs> that she has an issue with me. He's like, Yes, I do. She goes, No, you don't, because that's what you just said to me. He's like, No, it's not. And the girls are now like opening <laughs> door and listening out they're (laughs) they're like sketching it you know on a paper and carl's like oh my god you're being very difficult right now oh my god that's another (laughs) another thing you don't tell Lindsay, right yeah so danielle and kyle are in the kitchen they're talking and danielle she's overheard this fight and she's saying how like he's like you know like i had this conversation with carl and went really well and um that she thought they were going to be able to move forward but now like maybe not and the girls come down to the kitchen where she is, and they're like, oh, my God, Danielle, where's Danielle? And she goes, hello, guys, guess I was wrong on my perception of the whole thing. <laughs> and Carl's like, yeah, but did you hear how Lindsay sounded on the phone, guys? I just got to say, because 
You know, Lindsay sounded pretty hammered. That's my observation. <laughs> Kyle, whose perception is not clouded whatsoever by, you know, 20 bottles of Schlitz. And so, Sierra, whose perception is not clouded at all by ever uh, of how much she hates Lindsay's guts. It's like, <laughs> um, actually, I don't think she's as drunk as she could have been. So I wouldn't blame it on the alcohol because she could have been. She's been worse. Yeah. So now we're at the stage of a, of a Lindsay fight where she's going, babe. Beam. Beam. Oh no, it's even better because they've turned off the lights now. Oh yeah. So they've Infrared turned off the lights and so now we're watching in black and white and <laughs> it's in the dark. They're in the bed. <laughs> Just come over to him. Because he's lying Beam. there staring at the ceiling. Oh, he's like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah what? Yeah. yeah, babe. Okay. Like <laughs> you always get so mad. I was like, him. Uh, he always gets so mad. You're the one setting the house on fire. What are you talking about? I know. She's like, oh, I'm not mad. I'm not mad right now. She's like, no, you're very mad. And she's, he's like, oh, okay, no, I'm not mad. And then, meanwhile, downstairs, an Uber has arrived because actually people are going out again. I, I was like, whoa, whoa, is this like summer house? Any other season but this one? Wow, people are actually going out. Yeah, Gabby, Sierra, and Maya are, are no. Gabby, Maya's not there this weekend, right? No, Gabby, she's not. Sierra, Gabby, and Sierra go out. I know that much. Okay. Yeah. And then Amanda and Paige are like, "We're staying in. We found out that they can olives. It's amazing." <laughs> Here, I thought it was only a jar world, but cans. They make them in cans. So Carl's like, "Oh, you know what? Like Lindsay is like, you know, I'm, it's hard to have a conversation when you when you're like literally like drunk." What She's asking like, questions? What is that? What literally asking questions? Is that no, what? No, like you're putting me in a situation where I was like wrong and like that's not fair. Like, so I don't want to keep going down this road unless we're gonna be jogging it and like counting the miles. Oh, I will jog to the moon for you, babe. Oh, so favorite. Paige and Amanda sit in bed listening to this, like you know, George Burns and Gracie Allen or whatever, it's like a radio show. <laughs> and Paige is like, Oh my god, I finally understand. Olives are Obama. Yes, I can. <laughs> Yes, we can. Yes, we can. So I'm going to make it more just about myself. So yes, I can. <laughs> Hope. Isn't okay, then that's on you. Don't put that on me then. It's like, I'm not putting it on you. She goes, then why are you so mad? I don't want you mad. You're so mad. I'm exhausted. And I feel like no matter what I say. She's like, what? We can't have a normal conversation? No, like you're just not <laughs> handling it normally. Like. <laughs> I voiced what I was feeling, and we talked about shit, and I felt better after her. And she told me that she does not have an issue with you and me and our relationship, and she doesn't even necessarily have an issue with you. And it's just like things have changed, and she wishes things were different. And like you're putting this all on me. Guess what? I take the putting it all on you and put it on me. Okay, uh, on me. You put it on me. I'm not putting it all on you. I'm asking you to be a fucking partner to me. <laughs> And he's like, I am being a partner to you. And being a partner to you is telling you, you do not, I mean, you need to have a conversation with her when you can. That's it. Like, dial in. Okay. Like, I'm going to send you the dial in. I need a confirmation, yes or no, on the email for the meeting. Okay. Zoom in. <laughs> Zoom into this. Zoom into this relationship. <laughs> and she's like, I've had three conversations and I want my boyfriend to be like, you are a fucking piece of shit to my girlfriend. Go apologize now, you stupid piece of shit whore. With a nuts. How about you don't have a startup? You have an end down. How about that, you stupid bitch? Why don't you say that? Paige starts cracking up in bed. And Carl's like, no, you're just being rude. Just stop it now. She goes, no, I never want you to like, You came in the door looking for a fight. She goes, oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Lindsay, man you cannot just walk away okay sleep somewhere else i would not be near that there's just, nothing well, you, you know can what? say <laughs> he's like can you just like be happy tonight please i'll be happy when you understand that this is like yet again on me again it's on me this time it's on me and like you have nothing to do with this it's like reverse hot potato it's like they're they just want the potato to be like burning on them <laughs> They want to, they want to be, or they want to be the one in musical chairs that doesn't get a chair. They're like, put it on me, you put it on me. I think it's so funny that he's, he is so strong and not fighting. I mean, who can be goaded this much and not just be like, fuck up, you fucking crazy person. This is <laughs> why everyone has a problem with you because you act like a psychopath. Okay, <laughs> period. Stop back. But he doesn't. He just stays calm the whole time. And he's like, oh, I think you guys should talk. No, 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 no. But Lindsay just keeps pushing and pushing. And then when she doesn't get what she wants from him, which is screaming back at her, she needs that like toxic 
effort energy where it's like screaming back at each other and she's not getting it. So she's just pretending that he is screaming back at her. It's like, don't yell at me. Why are you yeah. so mad at me? So yeah. good. It's so funny to watch, but also so sad to like think that this might actually happen. Please don't get married. Please. <laughs> I, I, beg not, of you. I know. Just please think this through. So Carl's like, oh, I think you two need to have a conversation. She's like, oh, because I haven't tried three other times. Like, well, I had a conversation that I think will help for the next conversation. Yeah. So she, and then she goes kind of low, I think, because she's like, well, it would be fun to like have, like not me have to have to worry about it for once in my life. Because even on my birthday, like I couldn't have a day on my birthday and I couldn't even have a day after my birthday because it's all about you. And I was like, okay, well, that's because his brother died. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's a that was low. weird. That's a little yeah. low, I think. Well, then there's so, also, she's also like, he's like, well, I'm a horrible person and I fucked it all up. She's like, oh, pity Bernie. You always want a fucking pity Bernie. I'm like, you're accusing Carl of wanting the pity party. Your official anthem is, well, what about me? What? Are, how many sandwiches have you made me? Like, how many sandwiches have you made me? That is your fam- most famous line of all time. That is the definition of a pity party. <laughs> You're right. And it does make it worse because her her going, oh, this it's a pity party. It's always about you and a pity party. I couldn't even have a thing on my birthday because of you and your fucking pity. It's like, oh, not yeah. cool. Lindsay. That was a, that was not a that was not a nice moment. And, and but also, one, can, oh, I'm sorry, Ben, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, did you did you mention how Carl gets up and then like slams the door and leaves? Yeah, but then of course he comes right back in, he, like a second later. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, just had to check. Uh, I just to go to the bathroom. That's all yeah. good. <laughs> um, but Carl is doing this thing right now where he's like, we're on camera, and I'm just gonna be like very cool and calm and collected. But we've seen Carl when he does lose it, and I'll bet that these two go off, and he yells just as much as she does, and gets just as crazy as she does because we've seen it a couple of times bubbling up this season especially when it's about other people like when they were talking about danielle and he's like oh yeah so she's just like she's just gonna like not talk to us about it like, what the fuck is it? i was like oh, okay i bet he does have a little effort inside him yeah well she's drawn to that you know like people i don't know if people have necessarily watched season one but season one Lindsay and everett fighting was what it was just wild it was crazy it was never ending and it was just <laughs> oh i recommend it started over every, it yeah it started over any little thing and it never ended <laughs> so then um chris is carrying kyle inside and sam's wooing like the party gang comes back yeah they're, they're all like, back wooing. The and party, then yeah chris is like hey spank me with the tail cory oh harder yeah i'm in the marines do it harder i can take it Arr. i really can't deal with chris he just drives me nuts every single time he's on screen so he jumps in the pool and then Sam, Sam is there. Sam and Corey are in the kitchen. Sam's like going to go out to the pool and she's like, I'm, I'm going to go out there. And Corey's like, I hope you trip. <laughs> and then he's, and she's like, what? She's like, I said, I hope you trip. Yeah. Gotcha. And she throws him against the cabinet. She's like, what did you say? You're so fucking wasted right now. I could take you. Um, that- this couple. Stay away from me, please. Please. Stay very far away. This they fucking the... couple, they are so gross to they... me. And everyone online is like, oh my God, they're so cute. First, I will give credit where credit is due. Corey has made this season more fun. I think just he has. for the he fact has. that he's there and he is fun. He has a good vibe with everybody. I credit him for that. And the show couple... thrives with a fuck boy oh. in the midst. Yeah, but this couple. They just, this couple. So I saw a clip that she was doing. He's, by, he's like standing behind her. And I guess she's being interviewed for something. And she's like, oh, my God, how we kept talking, like, after the show filmed was, like, he had all these pictures on his phone, and he showed me a couple, and I was like, those are amazing pictures of us, and, like, I want you to send me all the pictures. And he's like, I'm not going to send them to you all at once. So then, like, every single day, you guys, I'm not even lying, every single day, he sent me a new picture. Wow. Every day, you guys, and everyone's like, oh, Wow, love, love via airdrop. You know, <laughs> it's like, they shut are up, like both of you. <laughs> shut up. Just shut so up. fucking both of you. Listen, I want to like learn your iCloud password. Just go in there and fucking erase all your pictures. Okay. Yeah. I just want to drop s- random photos of 80s celebrities in there just to screw with you. Just like, look, McClure. there's the sister from Elf. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to like go, go airdrop you like fucking deep fakes of Edie McClurg fucking Elf. <laughs> Here's Mr. Belvedere. Um, 
I uh, like they speaking of SNL, they totally remind me of that skit. Who was it? Was it like Amy Poehler and like Chris Kattan or something like that? Oh, no, I don't think it was them. Oh, Sherry O'Terry and Chris Kattan. This like couple that would like fight, but then like turn each other on and like at oh, like, was, dinner with other uh, people. It was Amy Poehler and somebody. Yeah. The bigger. Oh, Amy Poehler and yeah, the Amy Poehler and was it Chris? Well, they'd be like, Fuck I mean, you. Seth. I hate you. God damn it. And then they'd be like, do not fight in front of the pub. Do not fight in front of our. Our, but they'd uh, like turn each other on in the process. Yeah, and then they'd go to the kitchen and you, <laughs> the couple would be all awkward and you'd hear them in the kitchen like, yeah, fuck you. No, fuck you. I'm sick of you. I never stood in bed. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like the cabinet that's, that's, is baking and stuff. That's what this scene reminded me of. Let's say I'm pushing Corey up against the wall being like, what'd you say? You want me to trip? Is that what you say? You want me to trip? You want me to fall? I'm going to fall into your face? What else you want me to do? I was like, oh, get them away from me, please. So then uh, Kyle is hitting Chris's chest and uh, Chris is like, yeah, I'm military. And Kyle's like, yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> and then Corey, oh, we get some insight into Corey. Oh, guys, know this is the best backstory we've ever heard. Okay, Ben, take it yeah. away. Growing up, I was always the cute friend and I was always skinny and that bothered me so much because like when you're that young, Everything revolves around girls. And they were always like, you're so cute. And I was like, I don't want to be cute. I want to be hot. I want to be sexy. I want to be handsome. So I still think I look skinny and I'm never the aggressive one. I just make the girls choose. Oh I'm my tortured. God. You were bullied because you were only cute and not hot. Fuck off <laughs> with that backstory. Fuck he off. He wasn't even bullied. People were attracted to him, but they were attracted to him in a way that was not the way he wanted them to be attracted. But to that's like bullying to him, like not being considered hot. He was like, I yeah. was bullied in school. I was only considered really cute and not hot. So yeah. that's why I just can't be the aggressive one with girls. They have to that's, choose. <laughs> that's when I learned to have an open mouth laugh, of sticking my tongue out to touch my chin and giving double peace signs. And if a girl's really lucky, I'll do the double peace signs and tap them onto the window. Oh, God. So uh, then Kyle crawls into bed naked. Amanda's asleep because God, you know, she ate a lot of olives. She's like olives. olive drunk, you know, she's canned yeah. olive drunk, which she didn't she didn't really know how much canned olives can mess with your uh, leptin levels. So she's exhausted and Kyle <laughs> crawls into bed naked and he's like, hey, thanks for stealing my pillow, baby, because now I get to share your pillow with you. And you see that his pillow is still there. God, Amanda, how's the matter with this person? And how is he not know. bruised? Because I would have kicked his ass, literally kicked him out of the bed. <laughs> My pillow smells like Castle of Latrano olives. Ugh, oh, good night. Why is there a can opener in the bed? <laughs> <laughs> Why is there a pimento inside my pillowcase? <laughs> I was trying to stuff it, Kyle. So, so Carl's it's morning time. Yeah. Carl's like, oh, since lunch he's been drinking, I've been like struggling to navigate it. And like, I know it's like to have seven or eight drinks and then like something gets twisted. And then like, you get upset. Like, 97% of like the horrible things in my life have happened to me in that moment. So, I'm just going to think about it while I. Jog shirtless around the Hamptons. Bye. Oh. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna think about that while I jog and think about how much I can't wait to marry someone like that when I'm not drinking. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna think great. about that. I'm gonna think about that a lot while I uh, take a jog and then come back and act like it never happened. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so Gabby and Danielle and Sam are in front of the mirror getting ready, and Sam's like, "Oh my God, Lindsay was having the time of her life last life last the time of her time lice. of her life." <laughs> She got lies, but they're like party lies. <laughs> what about me? What about me? She had so many lies fucking in her hair last night. Uh, so yeah, she was having the time of her life last night, and she made up with Sierra like three times. And Gabby's like, what? And we see a clip of it. And Danielle's like, well, Carl and I had a great conversation here, and we covered everything, and it was great. But then after dinner, I heard Lindsay yelling at Carl. And they're yeah. like, is it going to be awkward? And then Gabby's like, oh, listen, from my perspective, I don't know how there cannot be tension. Yeah. So Sam goes, listen, you're having a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations and it feels like the one with Carl was good. The one with Lindsay was good, but like maybe it backtracked. And while Sam is like talking about this, Lindsay out of nowhere appears in the bathroom where they're all talking. She's like, hey. and then Sam, it was like Sam's first time being startled by Lindsay, which I think is part of living in that house that Lindsay pops up like a ghost out of nowhere. And the Sam goes, hi, hi, you want to jump in the conversation? Hi. Oh my yeah. God. I'm terrified. I may have just pooped on the floor. 
Yeah, because like, I just popped up. Like, what? Oh, why are you putting on makeup? What's happening, you guys? Oh, everything is great today. Look at me. I'm smiling. And Sam's like, um, I'm going to leave. And they're telling her <laughs> that they're going to go shopping. And well, they're all like, they're all like having like panic talk to be like, um, yeah, everything's fine. Like, I think we're going to go shopping today. You're like, yeah, yeah, let's, yeah, let's totally like, go shopping today. Yeah, I think it'll be really fun to go shopping. Lindsay, do you ever go shopping? You ever heard about shopping? Shopping is such a fun idea. Oh my God, is she still here? She's still watching us. Okay, um, do we have like about 10 seconds worth of shopping material left? Can we do this, guys? No, I don't think so. She's still staring at us. Oh no, what do we do? So um, Danielle just leaves. She just leaves the room. She's like, I need my morning beer. So then Gabby's like, so how was your night? Uh, I heard there were like raised voices. And so I was like, yeah, there were words exchanged. And Danielle's like, yeah, I need my morning beer. So Lindsay's like, um, yeah. Cause I was like, how'd it go with Danielle? And he was like, you need to have a conversation with her. And I was like, I've already had two conversations with her. And every time I get more confused about conversations with her. So, <laughs> so currently the state of your friendship is question mark, I guess. And Lindsay's like, mm yeah so then uh uh carl is working out um by the way i want to mention a few weeks ago ronnie you mentioned carl's shirt with all the bumps on it remember Mm -hmm. uh and actually the people who make that shirt it's called the amorpho they actually sent me one and i'm very excited to try it and i'm going to report back on how the carl shirt is so just give me a little update on that it's pretty cool like a weighted shirt I think it's like a way to try. I haven't actually put it on yet. I've tried it, That's but awesome. like it's cool. So well, the I'm gonna let everyone know. The yeah, more for it. Yeah, Carl more for sure. Yeah, oh, super cool. That's, yeah, it's thanks. incredible that I brought it up and uh, they sent it to Ben. So, <laughs> oh, thanks. well, actually, they reached, that, they reached out to both of us. Huh? Oh, but, great! Like, uh, I was the one who responded to the email. I guess I think they were like, like Ronnie's up, already huh? got a weighted shirt on. It's called his chest, so <laughs> we don't need to send it to Ronnie. We'll send I'm it to Ben instead. I'm sure if you respond to the email too, ha, you'll get your own amorpho too. We could be like amorpho twins. Ha, why are you always putting this on it. me? Don't uh, put it on me. What? Don't put it on me. All I really need in life are canned olives. So whatever, enjoy your fucking amorpho. Enjoy it. Well, how about you attach a bunch of canned olives to your shirt and work out then and see how that works out for you. Ha, okay. <laughs> so people are going out for the morning. Some people are going shopping, etc. cetera. Um, Amanda patients here come in. They're all dressed up to go shopping. And then Chris announces, he's like, all right, ladies, I've got a variety of games for us, okay? How long are you going shopping? Because I want—I don't want you to miss out on the games. And Sierra goes, know. yeah, don't worry about us. Go ahead and start without us and finish without us, okay? Yeah. Nobody likes you here. I, I speak for me and the audience. Go home. Yeah. And he goes, and when she goes, finish without us, he goes, I always do. They're like, oh, God. <laughs> but Sierra likes it. She's like finally charmed. You know, <laughs> so Carl comes in and uh, sounds like I want a hug. And he's like, "Oh, I was working out hug." This is from Barry's boot camp. <laughs> sorry if that, that sorry if that was a heavy hug, but like it, it, that was an amorpho hug. So. <laughs> yeah, it's just a little heavier than it's a heavy morning, but only because I'm wearing a weighted shirt, y'all. So he's like, "Morning, ha, ha, morning, ha, morning, ha." So, uh, um, yeah, so Carl's like, yeah, I went for a run and I was like working out and uh, then I had to shave my face because it grows back really quickly and like nothing's wrong in my life right now whatsoever. So let's just talk about my facial hair. Yeah, bro. Oh. Yeah, it's like, yeah, remember when I had an bar mustache just last week? And they're like, oh my God, yeah, you did. And Lindsay goes, yeah, I like role playing, but it doesn't really take a lot. <laughs> and then she's all over Carl and every <laughs> Amanda Page and um, Sierra just stare at each other looks. And they're like, what the hell? And <laughs> oh no, I just put Amanda and Paige give cringe looks with their same shape, different color sunglasses on their heads. They're both like, <laughs> <laughs> they're looking through life through olive colored lenses. So, uh, yeah, Danielle's like, oh, so we're just going to pretend like nothing happened, like nothing happened last night. I just listen, I want them to go the distance, and that's why I want them to fight. Because if you want to move fast, you can't sweep everything under the rug. Like, we see you, it's like you can sweep everything under the lo- rug. It's just, it's going to lead to disaster later. That's all. <laughs> I don't That's know. I mean, I don't know. I think sometimes there is a case to be made for sweeping shit under rugs. That's why rugs are there. Sweep it under the rug. Then you can come in with a shot back every few months and clean under the rug. Not every, <laughs> not everything needs to be a huge fight. And I don't know who you're talking about, it, who you're talking as well, anyway. You're not some relationship expert. You've had like one boyfriend since we've known you. And he's barely speaking to you even when he's on the phone with you. 
Why and well, actually, the truth is that, like, yeah, maybe they should fight, but it's not up to Danielle to decide what are the things that they have to fight about. Like, they decide if, like, if they wake up the next morning and realize, okay, that was just a stupid drunk fight, whatever, or whatever, you know, like, it's not up well, to, they don't have the to fight, fight on Danielle's Danielle. schedule. Yeah, and well, also the fight was about Danielle. So she's like, yes, I do want you to fight about me. So that being um, said, it does feel like this is an unhealthy relationship. <laughs> it does feel like, like, yeah, you guys are going a little too fast. Like, try to like figure out what's going on here because some things did come out in that fight. Yeah, I that that fight was. I mean, I couldn't be in a relationship. I'm not built like that. I'm not in a relationship at all ever. Per first of all, so I get that. But that kind of yelly, one person being sober, one person getting drunk and activated. I don't. I couldn't be in that. That mm -hmm. would make me nuts. Nope. No. So, uh, but also, I think that that is why you sweep it under the rug because Carl's probably thinking of it as like, well, she was drunk. Like Lindsay, when she's sober, we've seen her on this show sober, and we're like, boring because mm -hmm. all they do is say babe to each other and like brush each other's hair. It's boring. And of course, she goes out and she gets activated. Now we're like, don't marry her. But I think but that he Carl knew what was he probably was... coming from the place of like, well, I'm sober. So when she comes home acting like that drunk, that's just her dr drinking. And so I'm not going to hold right. it against her the next day. He knows so her. we don't need to talk about it. We just need to sweep it under the rug. So yeah, because they've known each case. other for several years. He knows this. He knows this is what Lindsay's all about. But still, yeah, in this case, I, I, say, say, I say sweep it under the rug. There you go. Well, that's what I say. I don't know. That's it. Uh, I, you know, I actually don't have a very strong opinion either way on whether this one should be swept under the rug. I think it was not... There were definitely not great things that came out of it, but at the same time, it's like, they, they, you know, he's Carl knows Lindsay. He knows this is what dating Lindsay's all about. So there is an argument to be made for like, uh, oh, whatever, let's just move forward. So uh just anyway, the girls under the rug. Yeah. Uh it's weird on the rug. We gotta sweep it on the rug. Sweep it on the rug. So, so let's go to Sag Harbor. That's where you go shopping yeah. here, I guess. So the girls yeah. come in and Paige is like, Oh my god, look at the store window, love the sand. Cute touch. <laughs> Cute. Yeah. Touch. I love those. I don't like those, but I love those. And what about those ones? I love those. Oh my God. I love that. I hate that. That's stupid. Look at the clerk. She's stupid. Oh, sorry. You could hear me. Well, you're stupid. I mean, I love you. Anyway, fun time shopping, guys. <laughs> so Sierra's like, should we get Carl, Carl more velour? <laughs> and Gary's like, oh my God, I love those. And Paige's like, yeah, love those. Hate those. <laughs> love those. Though. And so <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. And um, then we go back to home where they're playing games, Chris's games, and he's like drawn on a, a mustache with a marker because mm. I don't know, that's what game show hosts do, I guess. Yeah. And so Chris is like, all right, turd maggots. And Danielle's like, um, is that an army term? And he goes, yeah, army maggots. All right, Troy. Mm. You're gonna, Corey, you're gonna chug this bad boy two turns around the pool, then you're gonna do some crunches. God, I fucking, this guy's making me nuts. Whose idea of a fun day is this doing crunches and running in circles? This is a guy who does CrossFit, I believe. Like, this is the sort of guy who, like, who equates fitness with like mass amounts of fun and that everyone believes it's fun. He's the sort of guy who, if he were a go go dancer, his go go dancing would be to like do push ups on stage. And to like flex and like kiss his bicep, but not actually to dance or be sexy. He actually would conflate fitness and exercise with sexiness. That's yeah. what the, because that's what he's doing here. He's like turning all their fun, all their activities into just like working out. And so he like, they're playing flip cup and then he makes Corey like do laps and do push ups and do crunches. And then Corey's doing crunches and Carl's like, oh, oh. he looks like he's like trying to suck his own dick. Oh, yeah. I'm still like Carl the frat boy, guys. I just said that. Yo, isn't it crazy? Hey, dude, oh. trying to suck your wiener, bro. <laughs> so then back at the store, Paige is like, oh, so how are, uh, uh, speaking of uh, clearance racks, how were Sam and Corey last night? <laughs> and Gabby's like, oh, my God, they were very Sam and Corey. Like, I'm excited for her because she's excited for him. And Paige is like, yeah, I think they're like a nice summer flame. Which is Paige's yeah. way of going, oh, my God. This will never last, but have fun fucking about fuck boy for the next month, you know? <laughs> exactly. And Gabby's like, um, I feel like I could totally get along with Corey if you just like stopped trying to hug me all the time. Like, just don't touch me. <laughs> 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 Which I could totally I feel like that's such a great like character assessment of someone. He's just always trying to hug. But that's me though. Like I can uh, that makes me sad because I like Gabby and I she would never want to be friends no. with me. 
but you would hug to be like, oh, hey, how's it going? But he's hugging to be like, yeah, it's like part of like a persona building thing. It's not, you're not trying to build your persona through hugs, but he's trying to be like, yeah, I'm just like, cool, Corey. I'm just like your best friend, Corey, you know, but I might want to fuck you too. It's a different yeah. hug. I'm the guy in a pearl necklace who's harmless. Who's hugging Yeah. You. And then gives you yeah. a pearl necklace. So Amanda's like, um, are you not the hugger in the relationship? And she just looks grossed out. And Sierra's like, so are you affectionate? Okay, when was the last time you held somebody's hand? And Gabriel's like, ew, gross. And she goes, okay, <laughs> hold my hand right now. Okay, hold right, hold it. Okay, now finish the conversation. Ew. We're going to ease ugh. into this. Ugh. Ugh. Gabby is so uncomfortable. This, She's like, oh, this is terrible. I holding my hand is 20% off right now. Does that make it easier? <laughs> a little bit. Easier? My hand just offered you a job. Does that make it easier? Ugh. Maybe. And Amanda takes her other hand. She's like, okay, okay, I hate that. I hate that. It smells like olives in here. And Paige is like, well, <laughs> when we hold hands, like when me and Craig hold hands, he holds my wrist because my arms are like so long. So when we walk down the street, <laughs> they're like, uh, is that a problem at the airport? She goes, yeah, <laughs> someone literally checked on me. They said, ma'am, are you okay? I said, yes, it's not like he's my uncle. And they all start <laughs> laughing. Yeah, someone asked Paige how old she was. I'm actually surprised that there was not been like a paparazzi photo of like Craig holding her like that and someone being like, look at Craig. He's always trying to control her. <laughs> like, I'm surprised someone didn't think that he was dragging her through the streets in a pap photo. Yeah. So, so they return uh, from shopping and like, oh my God, gross. It sounds like they're at the pool. It sounds like they're doing a game. And yeah, because like, Chris blows no. his whistle and they're like, oh, it's sports gross. I don't want to go back there. <laughs> So then they go out to say hi, and um, they're playing this version of spin the bottle where Chris has it. They all stand in a circle. They spin the bottle, and Chris is holding an egg. And if the bottle lands on them, Chris gets to nail them with an egg. Yeah. So he's going to do that. So he does it, and he throws an egg at Carl. But it's a hard-boiled egg. And so it just pelts Carl on the on like the thigh. Cause I was like, where's the egg splatter? And there was nothing because it's hard boiled egg. It's like, oh God, uh, that hurt. And of course, like, oh my God, who put hard boiled who puts <laughs> hard boiled eggs in the fridge? Literally everybody. Where else do you put hard boiled eggs? And how do you not know there's a hard boiled can't you tell when you hold an egg, like if it's hard boiled versus not hard boiled? I feel like there's a distinct difference, right? They just like, um, that's Amanda's breakfast. So, um, so much for the bagel breakfast that Amanda loved. Then we get a Sam and Corey notebook romance moment. Sam's <laughs> like, um, I was like talking shit. And Corey's like, I'm cool with that. And she goes, you're too easy. And he goes, did you say I'm too easy? She's like, yeah, I like it harder. <laughs> Please. Put these people in a birdcage and send them off to like another Continent. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so Amanda's like, um, okay, girls, did you guys get your fertility stuff in the in the mail? Because I didn't open mine yet. Paige is like, oh my god, do you guys want to go to my room and like open our fertility pages? <laughs> yeah. So they go up to get their the the read their uh tests. So Paige goes first, and her test says that she will likely hit menopause around fifty one and has an average number of uh eggs for her age, and she's like. Hmm. All my stuff was normal. I guess I just, my body just liked and subscribed to itself. Huh. Um, and then Amanda's like, um, you may have an average round of eggs. Congrats. Mine says, mine says I may have an average number of eggs and I may reach menopause at 51. This is starting to sound like um, a false test. <laughs> um, not false, she's, but just a copy test. Like maybe it always says the same thing. You know what she's I mean? Like, it's like the magic eight ball. She's like, wait a second. It also says I have an abnormally large amount of olives in my ovaries. I didn't even know you could do that. It says you will soon discover olives. That's crazy. <laughs> it's like psychic. <laughs> So then Sierra, though, uh, her response is that she'll she will likely reach menopause earlier than 51 and she has fewer eggs than average. So she's kind of devastated by this. It's one of those cruel things. Like we've actually seen this in a lot of like like scripted things where someone encourages someone to take a test or get a result for something. And then they like, I'll do it with you. And then they are the ones, the people who encourage this are the ones who actually get the results that are um, less to their liking and so she's kind of like she's pretty floored by it and she starts to spiral and i feel genuinely bad for her because you know she clearly was not expecting that and was going through it 
Um, yeah, this is not a real test from a doctor. Let's go to the doctor, sure. guys. And normally I'm not the kind of person to say, let's go to the doctor. But and also I also uh, I also admit I don't know much about science or really much. Mm -hmm. But pricking your finger, I don't know that that's going to tell you how many eggs you have. OK, so go to your doctor. OK, they can literally count your eggs. They have a machine there. It's like a. We've seen uh, it on abacus. many Bravo shows. It's That's like an egg sure. kiss, okay? And they can count your <laughs> egg eggs. Kiss. I've seen it on Bravo. It can be done. Go to the doctor. Yeah. So Sierra, you know, buck up because who knows? Maybe it'll be better when, uh, you know, this. Uh, I'm like giving like a pep talk to something that happened in the past. I know, like so, it's over. So uh, <laughs> like, now they're doing more okay. game stuff outside, and Corey and Sam are lying down for another romantic scene where she's just like slapping his washboard abs. It's like, you can just lie there because I'm like just going to slap your stomach. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Go away. So um, uh, Amanda. Yeah. By the way, and Amanda is also having mixed emotions because she was actually hoping there would be a response to the test that was like, oh, yeah, you are like low on eggs. So it explained why she hasn't been having her period and why she's been losing weight. So it has actually not solved anything. And now she's also feeling a little worse. So, and Sierra is talking about how she wants to have a family one day. And so, you know, she wants, she always wants to have kids. So this is causing her to freak out. So then she's like, everything I'm doing right now in terms of my career and finances, and even looking for a relationship is to put myself in a position to have a family. Um, You're doing summer house and winter house, <laughs> first of all. Okay. And I don't think you're nursing. You're only recording TV shows. So I'd hate to disagree with you here, but I will say, I think you will be a beautiful wife and a wonderful mother, and I hope that happens. But just don't count on it happening on these shows, okay? I mean, well, look unfortunately, you, it might happen on these shows. And... Please don't let it happen. <laughs> Please don't let shows. it happen Please. on these shows. Okay, we've Please already got, we've already put Austin in the rear view mirror. Okay, that's what we're saying. I mean, we're look saying at who you've chosen. You know, at this point, I'm just worried about your picker. I want you to go to the doctor. <laughs> I want you to say check on my eggs and make sure my picker is okay because yeah. <laughs> you've gone from Austin to kind of Corey to God knows what else you've got in store for you. I'm worried. Yeah, yeah, I'm worried too. But um, now Kyle and Danielle and Carl are sitting together and Kyle's like, wow, oh my God, that was like my third workout of the day, like no big deal. And Carl goes, yeah, well, you need it after eating 5,000 calories of cookies. <laughs> Whoa, Carl. Whoa. Sorry, not everyone wakes up and goes to Barry's boot camp every morning like you do. Yeah, but that's how Kyle is. You know, he gets wasted and then eats everything. And I'm sure Maya has, you know, tons of cookies that they haven't let her promote. <laughs> um, so, which I then we see the again. Maybe so then we see the footage, by the way, of Kyle eating those cookies, binging the night before binging. on cookies. <laughs> okay, Kyle gives me so much hope. Like, that one day you can, like, have a body like that and binge. Yeah. God, that sounds amazing. So uh, Danielle, is, it's Kyle, Danielle, and Carl talking. And Kyle's like, so how are things between you and Lindsay? And Danielle says, you know, I thought things were great. But then after the Carl talk... I guess she just needs to hear a thousand percent support all the time. And Carl's like, well, I tried to relay that, but I guess I didn't do a great retelling. So I just said you should talk more. Hmm. Um, but also just like to point out, Danielle, you still haven't really said sorry for what she wants you to be sorry for, which was talking to all the girls about her behind her back. Well, so. they need to have just, they need to have a very simple conversation where they, they essentially come to the, to basically what we had talked about at the beginning of the podcast. Like, I should not have vented to those girls. Agreed. And Lindsay should say, and I should check on you more. And that's like, I think that's kind of like all they have to do. But yeah. they're not. Even though, they've, even though they've already had that conversation. Uh, but they haven't uh, quite had that conversation. Not quite. So they need to like so, really just like just say it, you know. So Carl, uh, so Danielle's like, yeah, but she doesn't need me now. And that's how it feels. Like I'm being cut out. So you have everything figured out. I'm happy, but checking on me still. Like it doesn't have to be like a World War Three, okay? It's not tit for tat blame game. And so, of course, Lindsay comes right up and's like, "What are you talking about?" And she sits <laughs> right on Carl's lap possessively. You know, she's like, "This is mine." Um, do you have anything to say to my seat? You can say it to me first. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, "Oh, we were actually all talking about you, uh, honestly." She's like, oh, really? Like, what did I miss? And he and Danielle's like, "Well, for some reason." you both feel or have felt that I don't support you guys as a couple. And Lindsay's like, correct. And Danielle's like, well, and like this, that's like so far 
beyond what is actually happening. Not really, like, because you said I'm allowed to be weirded out by this. I'm allowed to be what you know, whatever well, by this. So that's but that could be that's that could be different from you could still support something but be weirded out by it. I I firmly believe that. But like I support it. I know that they're happy. I'm weirded out though because like our relationship has changed. Mm -hmm. I think you have best of both worlds. Okay, so then Lindsay's like, but you keep saying our friendship has changed because of this relationship. And Danielle's like, well, I don't want you to get defensive because this has nothing to do with me wanting to get more out of you and our friendship. Because I do feel like, you know, I need you, you know, because like we used to always hang out. And Lindsay's like, but you're not in the city, Danielle. Like, I'm not saying you aren't there as much as our relationship hasn't changed. Wait, I'm not saying, hey. Oh, I'm not saying, hey, you aren't there as much so our relationship this change like come on and she's like yeah but you can't so you can't check on me physically if i'm physically not there you can't check in with me and she goes no <laughs> Lindsay goes no <laughs> so so then kyle goes well she literally just wants to be seen by her best friend also does anyone have any mint milanos just asking for a friend so and Lindsay of course just... amanda and Paige are watching this whole thing like <sighs> Yeah, you know, like spooning the olives in their mouth. Here it yeah. comes. So Danielle's like, why the fuck do you get like this? Now, also, I will say to Danielle is not good at communicating with Lindsay because for, uh, early, like a few, few lines ago, she was like, don't get defensive. And now she's saying, why do you get like this? Because when she says those things, all she's doing is making Lindsay defensive. She and knows. it's getting away from the conversation. Just like, when Lindsay's acting like that, focus on how you can just communicate with her and not like not like attacking her for like having these admittedly very defensive reactions. Well, everybody knows. Every everybody knows, especially I feel like every woman, when you're fighting, you don't say, Oh my God, you're crazy. Like that's like the last thing you say. And that's mm -hmm. kind of what Danielle is saying over and over. Like every time Lindsay says something, she goes, Oh my God, why are you getting like this? And I yeah. think Danielle's purposely doing this to to activate Lindsay, to get Lindsay activated, to make Danielle. I think Danielle, look, everyone who's been on the show this long, these two know that this is now a storyline, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just a friendship thing. This is now like a storyline. It's like finally Danielle versus Lindsay. And so I think Danielle is going to do whatever she can. And of course, she always sees Paige and Amanda over there watching everything, getting ready to report to the court what just happened. So mm -hmm. I think Danielle's playing this a little more um, carefully than people give her credit for. I think she's purposely trying to push Lindsay over the edge. Of course, that's not very hard to do because Lindsay yeah. falls for it every time. Yeah, I don't know if it's purposeful or not, but I think you made an interesting case. And Danielle's like, she's like, it's not tit for tat. Like, this is me trying to explain myself to you because I want us to get back to the sister sisterhood we had, wherein... You just did things, and I was like, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. I mean, that was a real sisterhood. And she's like, yeah, I want us to go back to the friendship we had. And Lindsay goes, but then you're talking shit about my relationship all the time, which is true. And, of course, Danielle has no answer for that. So she just goes, come on, that's fucked up. I'm, like, crying now. I need to go. Like, how do you not see that? I'm going to go punch a wall. Like, this is ridiculous. Paige is like, from afar, Paige goes, oh, Danielle's crying. She's She's crying. Get Open up a new can of olives. Stat. This is a big one. This is a big fight. <laughs> and Danielle's like, I would like a die for you. Don't you see that? And Lindsay's like, I've never blamed you for my shit. She goes, I'm not blaming you. Why does it have to be that? And she goes, well, that's what I keep hearing. And Danielle goes, from other people? And she goes, yeah, because you keep talking behind her back to other people, you idiot. <laughs> that's why so she's hearing it from other people. You can't get mad at her for listening to other people when you're talking to other people about her so Paige is like so danielle like storms away and she goes inside so Paige is like um i'm gonna go see if she's okay so Paige and amanda of course go scurrying afterwards but danielle's in the bathroom so Paige and amanda just, just sort of stake out the kitchen and they're like let's just like casually eat these olives so that way when she comes out we just like happen to be here i'll be like do you want an olive have you ever heard of olives before they're like really good do you want to try it then she could be like an olive sister with us and then she comes out of the bathroom and they hug her with their mouths full <laughs> <laughs> like, mm, mm, mm. she's like i mean just when i think we're breaking through it's tip for tat which by the way i just learned that phrase and i love yeah, it it's fucking amazing i'm gonna use it every chance i get she's like and yeah. she's like you've been talking to everyone else about it it's like 
you've you're literally, literally talked to right Paige now. and Amanda and you're doing it right now. <laughs> so then Lindsay outside is like, it's not fair to put it on me. Oh, God, that's her favorite thing. <laughs> that's say. her thing. Don't put it on me. Like, I understand the friendship component of it, but like, I have also have like a lot of feelings about like how she's been speaking about my like relationship two days ago. And it was, she said it was like weird that we're like dating. When we see the flashback where Danielle said, I'm allowed to feel weird about it, which is different than saying it's weird that you're dating and I will stand by that. Thank you very much. Not really. She's saying I'm allowed to feel weird about it. Like it's weird. Well, <laughs> I, it, they're saying? very similar. I mean, she's saying like, like I support you. I support you guys, but it's just like, it's weird for me because we were a trio and now we're not a trio anymore. So it's weird for me. That's different than saying like how weird that they're dating. Like why would they ever date? You know, that's a different, that's a different, in my mind, that's a different uh, nuance. So she's like, well, it's two days ago. Now, two days later, now she's supportive suddenly. And Kyle's like, well, I think right. for her, it's going to be weird because you guys are like a three-legged stool. Hey, by the way, that's what they used to call me in high school. Am I right? <laughs> that's how everyone wants to be described. Like, can we go back to Three Amigos instead of Three-Legged Stool? Thank you. And But he's like, yeah, now you guys live together with like your weird animals. And like, I'm sure she's just trying to like make sense of that. And she's like, Yo, how does Lindsay not understand that? Lindsay's like, hmm. <laughs> like Lindsay does not take that in whatsoever. So because they're two, they're fighting about two different things. Yeah, basically. they actually are. They so are. then Danielle is inside saying, "I'm trying, and she isn't. Like, if you need some, if you need some time to marinate about what you want in this relationship, then fine, do it. Because like, this is what I need, and if you don't want it, that's fine. Well, she needs you to stop talking shit behind her back." And you're currently doing that. Although she does that as well, too. You know, she, she went into the girls and does it too. So I don't know that I would. It's a weird really thing because they're all in the her. same. Yeah, there's sorry to talk over you, but there's like they're all in the same house. And um, like so at some point, you, you just if you need to vent, like you just have to, there's the people that are there, you know. But yeah. um, yeah, but yeah, so Danielle's basically like, yeah, if you need to marinate on that, then you know, marinate on it. And Paige is like, speaking of marinating. Have you ever had marinated olives? They are divine. So then um, Sierra has made a fire and she's very proud of it because this yeah. is what happens when you don't bring Luke back. Okay. People yeah. have to learn to make fires. So she's like, I can do anything a dude can do without a man and on my period. Not going to lie. Look at this fire. And everyone's like, wow. And Kyle <laughs> comes out in his Kenny Chesney cowboy hat and they have hot dogs yeah. and hamburgers. And then Corey tells Sam she's cute. And Sierra's like, oh my God, I can't wait till you guys just go to the bone zone already. Yeah. And they start talking about vibrator. Well, Chris goes, I have Chris, a question. He's like, if a girl whipped out a vibrator on your first date, would you guys feel offended? I'm like, I would be offended to be on a first date with Chris, to be honest. <laughs> That's where I'd be more offended. I'd be and offended at myself. <laughs> Danielle's like, well, if she pulls out a vibrator, you should feel bad about yourself. And Paige goes, uh, I don't think that's true, which is funny because she's with Craig, whose thing with, with Naomi. Naomi's like, you don't even ever have sex. Like, what the hell? Like, he became like some, he became known as like some sexless monster or whatever during, not monster, but you know what I mean? That was kind of the storyline yeah. back then. So I love that Paige, Craig's like, oh, thank God. Yeah, you've got Paige a vibrator because I'm like that. I'm very tired. You know, I'm sexual, but then I'm sexual for like 10 minutes. And then I'm like, OK, that was fun. Like, can we do something <laughs> else? So I yeah. love a toy, you know, uh, Paige is like, yeah, um, yeah. Craig and I like we introduced toys quickly. I mean, I I have my vibrator and he actually just had Tonka trucks, which is sort of weird. He just sort of pushed them around on the carpet. <laughs> She's like, you know, he uh, stabs me with a vibrator and then he stabs a wall with a butter knife and then he comes. It's the weirdest yeah. thing I've ever seen. But, you know, I've known that vibrator for longer than most people here. So I feel most comfortable with the vibrator. Sorry. Which is what Craig also says about his minions plushie, which he cuddles in bed at night instead of me. <laughs> oh. He said it inspired him to have a pillow business and yet none of them are round. <laughs> Which is super weird. Uh, has it? a vibrator. Okay. You know what? I'm That's thinking fine. about olives too much. Let's just keep moving. <laughs> so now they're dancing and they're dancing and like they're in the bunch of them are in the kitchen. They're dancing like in the windows, trying to get the outside people to come in. And Carl's like, oh, this is like, you know, like the red light district in Amsterdam. And like the women dancing in windows. Like it's like that. Right, guys? I can take that. From, you want me to take that from the top so that we can really think about like that image? And then you can all laugh this time because you didn't laugh this first time. Okay. No. Okay. Cool. 
So then we see Carl and Lindsay in bed, and Carl's like, Babe, you're like so beautiful, babe. And she's like, um, Don't make me cry, babe. I don't want to be crying right now, babe. I don't want to cry. Oh my God, Lindsay making cutesy voice. I can't. I, I know, it's a lot. So then, um, Sierra and Paige are in their room just sitting on their beds and then everyone comes in to dance and everyone's like, ah, they're just like dancing in there having a fun time. And Lindsay and Carl are just like, basically everyone is in one room having fun time. And then Lindsay and Carl are in a separate room just being cutesy. And so, but like you could tell Lindsay can't stand this. Lindsay cannot stand being away from the group and not doing all the fun things as everyone else. So she's like, um, babe, like, do you want to see what's like happening? Like, two doors down like this is not the same as going to montauk this is literally just like two doors down the hallway can we at least can we at least peek in can we just like, yeah okay let's go do it let's go do it uh, so they go and everyone's like oh my god it's kyle and Lindsay. So they, all <laughs> they blew, actually joined and in the fun yeah i was like okay it's time to go now <laughs> that was fun that was, was not fun babe she's like that was so much fun babe that was great i was like i'm glad we spent 30 seconds in there and got a taste of what life used to be like when we had fun doing fun things yay uh, so then in the morning, Chris goes through the house blowing the whistle. God, this fucking guy. I can't. He's, so he's Paige and Sierra. Awful. So Paige and Sierra wake up and um they're talking about. Well, by the about way, he doesn't great... he doesn't just go through the house with the whistle. So Corey spent the night in Sam's bed. So he's like, huh, where's wow, which room did Corey stay in last night? So he goes downstairs with the whistle. He goes into their room, which is sort of like a shared room also, and he pulls the blankets he like whips the blankets off the bed that they're in and then pulls Corey off of it aside from the fact that that's like so obnoxious because like who wants to be woken up that way but like they could have been naked under there that could have been actually very mortifying for sam well, for both of them but i think especially for sam you know and there was a whole real world scandal based on this very thing in season two okay chris this shows what oh, happens when you God. don't pay attention to history you don't need to whip out a Tammy defense here. Okay? This, <laughs> no, but this I think in all many years later, and these people fuck on camera now in front of the camera. No, but I do think in, in all in all seriousness, like that was fucked up. Like they they were like making out all night long. Like, I don't I don't think you just go into someone's bed and just like whip the sheets right off them on camera. Okay, uh, this is an hour and a half in. Like it's too long for me to care about Chris whipping off a blanket. But I don't I was disagree mad. with he you. He made me mad, and I, I wanted to register that anger on. The I internet. support Thank it. You. Your registration has been stamped. Thank you. Thank uh, you. But I, I can't care. Okay, that's fine too. So uh, either way, and the funny thing is, I thought this episode ended after the Danielle and Lindsay fight, but it's just it's why just isn't like, it? Puttering. It just keeps. I just kept scrolling. That's why I was like, "What the fuck with this show? How are we talking about Summer House?" <laughs> Where literally nothing happened except Lindsay screaming all episode. Well, it was and a good episode, but like it feels like the episode ended, and now we're watching this stuff. Oh. And um, basically, Sierra, I mean, Paige's wrist hurts because Corey jumped on it last night, and now they're drinking orange juice in the like they're sitting around. And Sierra's like, guys, how old is this orange juice? It says September 29th. Like, what month is it right now? Paige is like, August. That's uh, Sierra. She's like, first of all, they're in the kitchen and Paige is eating out of a pot. I think it's something yeah. from their, I think it's something like gruel. they had from yesterday, like at their, their like hamburger or party or whatever, like potato know. salad. I don't know, but I was cracking up at just like, because Paige is so little anyway. She looks like a little girl just eating out of this giant bowl, you know? <laughs> so she's just sitting there and Sierra's like, yeah, so this orange juice expires September 29th, guys. What month is it now? Paige goes, August. She goes, mm -hmm. oh, so is it old? Um, September 20th. Um, so look at the bottle. Does it look like Lindsay? Because that will be your answer. September 29th, it's August right now. She goes, yeah, but like, what's the number day? She goes, it doesn't matter. We're not even close to September 29th. And Sarah <laughs> goes, yeah, but sometimes that's just the date the store has to sell it by. Like, it could still be good. And Paige goes, it is good. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I think I wonder, did Sierra was Sierra thinking it was September 29th of last year? Is that what was going on? Yes. <laughs> she thinks somebody went to the store and bought orange juice that was from a year ago. Like how backwards is the Hamptons? You know, That's, those little grocery well, stores. The funny thing is all that orange juice, like simply orange, all that stuff and Tropicana, all those things, those things sit in a vat for like a year before they even get bottled. 
I read oh, this. It's, it's like mayonnaise. Well, it's like mayonnaise. Mayonnaise never it, like literally. Have you ever seen bad mayonnaise that you buy from the store, like Hellman's? <laughs> it never goes bad. I think orange juice in The Walking Dead. There's literally no food left on Earth because it all spoiled, but they can all still have orange juice somehow. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's really fascinating how they how they treat orange juice, and they it's like technically it's allowed to be called quote unquote fresh, but it's actually been sitting in a giant vat somewhere for a year before it's even been put in those plastic bottles. Oh, I didn't anyway, know it's, like it's a great uh, metaphor for the, the, the cast members on this show. Yeah. So, um, Carl and Lindsay in their room are like, Carl's like, I miss you, babe. When I was working out, it's like, you know, babe. <laughs> yeah, babe. You know, babe. I miss you, babe. Yeah. So then Amanda is downstairs and she's like, where's my man? And Sam comes down. She goes, Sam. And Amanda goes, oh my God, you're calling him your man now? She goes, for now. And she tells us, Corey hasn't made it below the collarbone yet. My mom will be so proud. So we're going to go fucking Montauk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we're going to see how far this chemistry takes us. We're going to fuck. Yeah, we are. And I'm going to see if I get the egg or not. So, yeah. hey, mom. And Chris is like, oh, so uh, good seeing you, Corey. And Corey's like, yeah, I mean, I might be back next weekend. I don't, I'm not even sure. I, I maybe. He's like, oh, really? <laughs> it's like, so is doesn't Corey own businesses? What's up with this sort of like buying? I mean, obviously, I know why he bought a one-way ticket because he's on this TV show. But <laughs> like, I like the idea that he, quote unquote, has businesses in Charlotte. And he's like, literally nowhere near them. He has a so, smiley face gym. Doesn't he just have the gym, gym where you can get a drink while you work out? Yeah, but it's like he painted a smiley face because he's like an artist deep down. He's, not, like, he's an artistic soul. That came from when people were like, you're cute and not hot. I became yeah. an artist to like deal with my pain. <laughs> His emotions. So now we go to the city and I'm like, how is this happening? We're in. The, we're starting a city sequence. The show is like, it's been going on for like three hours now. And so the music is suddenly very intense. It's almost like a corporate training video. It's like dun 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 dun. And Carl's just like walking down the street, like yeah, I'm walking, yeah. You know, like all the things that have like happened to me and like have led me to where I am like right now in the summer. And like everyone listens to that like little voice in their heart. My little voice is screaming. You look great, by the way. But it's also screaming, Lindsay, Lindsay. And deep down, there's a fear, but that's totally natural. It's totally natural. Fear is natural. So that's what Jared's told me. And I'm here to make it a vesh. So the ring dealer is the dad's girlfriend from Succession. And she's like, oh, my God, are you ready? And he's like, oh, my God, holy shit. Can I just say to this ring, babe, wow, babe, babe. I can't hold back anymore. I'm going to get down my knee. I'm going to do it. And it looks like next week. Me. It's happening, happening next week on Summer House. And that brings us to the end of Summer House and everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us. We appreciate. Yeah, and we will catch you on the next episode. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye.